It is now my great honor to invite forward the beloved American who introduced Wes Moore to America 10 years ago so that she can introduce Wes Moore to us as our 63rd Maryland governor. Welcome, Ms. Oprah Winfrey. Hello, Maryland! I can tell you it is such a joy, a joy to be here on this day, and what a joy to be back here in Maryland. I'm back! I have to say, I was just 22 years old when I first came to Maryland. I was starting a new job as a co-anchor of the 6 o'clock news on WJZ TV. And I left my home in Nashville and I drove myself here in an Oldsmobile Cutlass to Baltimore. I moved into the third floor at 10109 Windstream Drive, Columbia, Maryland which at the time was considered this new model city. I was so excited, living away from home for the first time, from my family for the very first time. And as I walked around the city of Baltimore that first week, I saw the strangest thing. Their promo campaign was my face on billboards <laughs> and my face on the backs of buses. My face advertising the 6 o'clock news with Jerry Turner. Remember Jerry Turner? <laughs> and a question on the billboards and the buses said, what is an Oprah? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't really know the answer to that myself. When I moved to Maryland, I had no idea really who I was or what an Oprah was. But I will tell you something, Maryland is where I figured it out. The eight years that I lived here were some of the most significant years of my life. I grew up here from a young, naive girl. I truly like had corn growing behind my ears. I was truly green behind the ears. And grew into a woman becoming more and more of myself from every challenge and every experience. I found community here at Bethel AME Church every Sunday. I found the freedom to perform and feed my creative spirit. I found my professional calling sitting alongside Richard Scher for the show People Are Talking. And though it wasn't the job that I moved here to do, it was the job that sparked my desire to use television to tell stories that would impact people's lives. And I found some of the closest friends of my life here, Maria Shriver and my BFF, Gail King. But most important, in Maryland, I found myself. This state is something special. It's a place where so many others have done and will do exactly what I did. Plant the seeds of their wildest dreams and watch those seeds grow into reality. Maryland is full to the brim with opportunity. It was back then, it is now. And I know that with Wes Moore as your governor, Maryland's best days lie ahead. So let me tell you a little bit about the West more that I know, the West that I'm proud to be standing here with today. Well, I met Wes for the first time in 2010 when I interviewed him about his best-selling book. Y'all read the book, right? <laughs> Everybody's going to want to read the book now. I was so impressed even then by his integrity and his wisdom. He was wise beyond his years. He knew who he was, and he had a vision for who he intended to be and how he wanted to serve. 
Though I have to say, I was delightfully surprised when he called me last year, on January 6th, as a matter of fact, to tell me that he wanted to serve as governor. And I said, you want to run for governor in this political climate where everybody is so polarized, where there's such vitriol? Look at what's happening right now as we speak, because as he was telling me, I could see the CNN screen behind him, and that's the first I knew of the invasion of the Capitol. So then I turned it on, I go, look at what's happening. You want to run in this climate? And he said, exactly, exactly. So I said, go for it, and I'll be here if you need me. I always walk away from a conversation with Westmore with a new perspective, with new ideas, with a new way of seeing things, a new burst of positive energy. That's what you do for people. And about five years ago, Wes and our now First Lady of Maryland, <laughs> Don Moore, had come to my house for dinner, and we had a conversation that stayed with me. I still think about that conversation. We were talking about, as we often do at the table, how to live with purpose and meaning, and how to continue that into your later years, and how to know that you are spending your precious days in a way that you'll be able to look back with pride and have absolutely never any regret. And I remember, Wes, you said to me, because I had just recently ended the show, and you said, your job title, talk show host, will change. Your titles change throughout your life, you said, but your occupation will also change. But your work, you said, will always be consistent. Wes has had quite a few titles in his life. Arthur, Army Captain, CEO, and now Governor. <laughs> the man has worn many hats, but the work he's done, the work he has always done, that has never changed. It has not changed, not even a little. He has always been committed to helping young people find purpose and direction in their lives. That's why he started a small business in Baltimore that gave a helping hand to college students who needed one. He's always believed that everyone deserves an equal shot at success, an opportunity to live well, to have lives that are meaningful and provide for their families in the way that he's able to provide for James and Mia. That's why he joined the Robin Hood Foundation, one of the largest anti-poverty organizations in America, and distributed more than $600 million to families in need. He has always loved our country and believed that our country is worth fighting for. That's why he served as a captain and a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division. So you see, this might be his first day as an elected official, but Wes Moore has been a public service servant his entire adult life. And there's so much more to come. He's just getting started. I once asked Wes what service meant to him, and he told me it's the thing that makes your heart beat a little bit faster. Well, something tells me that is you prepared to tell us about your vision for a stronger, safer, and more equitable Maryland, a Maryland that leaves no one behind. As you prepare to serve the state that has meant so much to you, I do believe that your heart must be pumping, 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 <laughs> pumping some wild, ecstatic excitement and love for Maryland and all who abide here. It is my honor to introduce you as my friend, to introduce you as someone who I believe in, as a man I truly respect, and a man I so trust. I trust you. I trust your vision, I trust your leadership, and I want you to know you can trust it too. 
in your new governor, Westmore.